My first experience of red squirrels uh, was back in Norway when I was about three or four years old. My grandmother would used to watch me quite regularly. And my grandparents lived in a big house and loads of nice stuff. And we would start to feed uh, red squirrels in the garden. And this one squirrel got really comfortable with us and actually followed us into their house and even into their kitchen. And my grandma actually thought this was very funny and we kept feeding it in the kitchen. Uh, until one day, uh, on its way back out, it actually ran up my grandma's curtains. Apparently, it wasn't so funny anymore then. My name is Aspen Halland. I'm a wildlife photographer and an OM system ambassador. In the UK, red squirrels aren't doing very well. A combination of habitat loss, traffic accidents, and the introduction of the grey squirrel has really seen the red squirrel population numbers just decline. Ever since the grey squirrel was introduced about 150 years ago, the red squirrel population has gone from about 3.5 million to what it is today at around about 120 to 160,000 individuals. I live in Perthshire in Scotland, which is one of the best places to see red squirrels here in the UK. I love to photograph the red squirrels. They are filled with character and even just watching them is always a fun time. One of my favorite ways of photographing them though is to go out and trying to find them um, naturally. So with no input from me, uh, trying to study them, learn about their behavior, learn about their feeding signs and try and figure out where they're going to be and create the images that I can in that way. It is a more difficult approach, but I have to say it is always more rewarding to me. I really enjoy the process of learning that way, learning more about nature, learning more about the red squirrels and their natural behavior. In the winter time, it's one of the best times to look for drays. A drays is basically a squirrel's home. It is a round structure, about 30 to 50 centimeter diameter. It is found close to the trunk and high up in a tree. It may look a little bit like a bird's nest, but birds will often pick up twigs, whereas squirrels, they might actually break off twigs from a tree. So they often have foliage left on them. You can actually see quite a bit of vegetation in a squirrel's tray. Feeding signs can be a good clue as well to where to find squirrels. They will eat the seeds in a cone and you can often find the remains of the cone with what looks like a half-eaten raggedy little bit that's left of the cone. Now obviously if you do have grey squirrels in your area as well, it could just as easily be a grey squirrel's eaten cone or squirrel tray. The last year we had a beech mast year. That meant that the beech tree will produce uh, an extraordinary amount of beech masts, which Birds and mammals like squirrels absolutely love to eat. So I would go to this little area of a forest here where it has a row of beech trees and just an abundance of beech mass underneath it. Around November, December last year, I would go there every morning when I had a clear morning. And as the sun would rise, the first bit of light would kind of stream right through this forest, which meant that I could photograph red squirrels that are backlit. And at the time I was testing out the OM5 and I got one of my favorite red squirrel images. It's a small in frame, but it really shows the habitat and the environment that the red squirrel was in. Now, another way to experience red squirrels up close is to feed them, but this needs to be done responsibly. And putting out a mixture of food, such as hazelnuts, uh, unsalted peanuts, and sunflower seeds, it's a good mixture so that makes sure that they get what they need. There's also a good idea to not overfeed them. You don't want them to be reliant on the food. If the red squirrels are fed too much, they can suffer from calcium deficiencies. Now this can be added to water. You can also leave deer antlers uh, nearby where they're feeding and they will actually nibble on that to get the calcium they need. Another good idea for them to get enough calcium is to leave out some apples and carrots. I always make sure that I leave out enough hazelnuts for them as well. These are perfect for them to cache. So they will often run up, grab a hazelnut or as many as they think they can carry, which is usually way too many, and then run off with them. You see they won't even go that far. They'll start to dig and they'll door in the ground for some rainy day. And you may be surprised to learn that the time of year when the red squirrels uh, actually struggle to find the most food is actually during summer. And now in winter time is a great time to photograph them. The ear tufts have really come in and every now and then we get some snow and the red squirrel look absolutely fantastic in snow. One thing I also make sure to really show off is in background. And I photograph the red squirrels just behind here actually and the bracken that's here, the red and the color of that coming into autumn and winter now just makes for a really nice background for the squirrels. 
A behavior that I'm always looking out for as well is uh, when they're feeding on a peanut. Very often I found that after they finish eating, they'll kind of pause for a second and sometimes give them a look as well. It's almost like they're posing for the camera. And that's usually when I get my image. I have to say the OM1 does a really good job at tracking the squirrels as well. Because back here I get a combination of birds and red squirrels, I tend to often leave the AI focus detection in the bird mode, and that seems to work fine for the red squirrels as well. Now, whether you are going out photographing red squirrels in a more natural setting, or if you are feeding them, I wish you the best of luck. Just enjoy being out there and get creative.